Good afternoon and welcome to Real Chicks Rock Presents Real Discussions. I am your host, Michelle Dosbert, and I'm super excited today because today I got five on it. <laughs> I got five on it today, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to celebrate me sitting in this space for the last five years, every first and third Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have been bringing the conversations, the discussions, the chats, the talks with you. And I'm so thankful that you spend time with us every time, every time we've been here. I've had the distinct privilege and honor to talk to so many incredible people from uh, therapists for mental health to financial management and wealth to marketing to PR people to women who are doing great things in corporate America to DJs to artists to songwriters to producers Grammy nominated folks I've talked to Grammy nominated people here on the platform so today I'm super excited um, I could not do this without you so I thank you guys for taking the time for leaning in for listening for sharing for commenting, for just being a part of the journey. Um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful to Status Network, who has been holding me down for the past five years. I could not do this without them. So thank you, Jack. Thank you, Ned. Thank you, everybody that's been the Status Network team that has been allowing me to put out a quality show time after time. I couldn't do it without those guys. So with, without further ado, I'm not going to bore you. Maybe I'll say some more uh, thank yous towards the end. I got some anxious, beautiful, Beautiful, talented guests that want to get it in and start having some conversations with me. Today's topic, the ladies who sing part two. Yes, part two. My part one was back in 2019 when I talked to Julie McKnight and Dawn Tallman. We had a blast. And the thing about it was Julie surprised me because I thought she was going to call in from North Carolina. She was in Atlanta and came in and shared the space with me. And it was just a great afternoon of conversation. And so today is part two. And I know I got a lot of new listeners because these women are dynamic and and phenomenal and they got followers and people that love them and support them so let me tell the people a little bit about what real chicks rock is all about we're all about the empowerment of women and we have been doing this through creatively collaborating and connecting to raise awareness about issues that impact women we do it through community service um, public speaking mentoring events and the arts and so as I said at the beginning of the show this is five years of doing it at this desk well in in this format for five years and so we're excited super excited so today I like to introduce my ladies because these ladies they can sing y'all they like to sing so my I got Tasha LaRae and T Divinity Smith as my guest hello ladies Hello. <laughs> yes. Hi, ladies. How are y'all? All is well. All is yeah. well. Look at those big, beautiful smiles. You ladies are just as excited to talk to me as I am to talk to you. Right? You know it. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, let's get it in. Let's start ch chopping this up. Let me start with you, Tasha. Where are you from? Where are you from? I Born and raised Omaha, Nebraska. Is that yeah, right? They got black folks out there in Omaha. They do, and it's still some more people. When I moved away, <laughs> I didn't bring them all with me. <laughs> how how was it growing up in Omaha for you? Was it? Tell me a little bit about that life for you. So it was compared to Atlanta, it was much slower, which I actually appreciate now. Mm. Um, but um, but it was really cool. You know, I had a neighborhood of friends and, you know, group of friends that we grew up basically together. So same people you went to high school to elementary, you know, you went to middle school, high school together. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still friends with a lot of those folks even till today. OK. Um, but once I got to high school, my my experience around folks became very, very diverse. Mm. Um, because more the more people were coming from like the Air Force Base, which wasn't so far away. Mm -hmm. So we were having a large mix of people from around the world mm -hmm. who were in school. And, you know, it took several years later, about a decade later, I realized that that was something that helped prepare me for international travel mm -hmm. and the lifestyle that I have now. So, um, so yeah, it was a really cool place to be. Mm -hmm. and then when I moved to Georgia, it was a whole nother story. <laughs> Do you get a chance to go back home often or how, you know? Um, 
I, I, at first I didn't, um, but for the f past couple of years, I've been going back um, to visit family because I still have like an aunt and my dad still lives there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, so I go and check on them because they're getting older and more and more stubborn by the day. So they don't want to tell you nothing. Mm -hmm. So you just got to go put your eyes on to make sure you're okay. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. But yes, yeah, it's, it's fun. I get a chance to go back every once in a while. Awesome, awesome. Divinity, my love. Where are, you, where are you from? Where are you from? Detroit, Detroit, Michigan, born and raised. Mm, loving the D, loving the D. Yeah. Uh huh. Tell me what it was like for you as a child growing up in Detroit. Um, my childhood was kind of quiet, I would say. Um, really? I yeah. I you know I lived in a neighborhood where all of the children around me went to the neighborhood schools, and I did not. So I just always kind of stayed to myself. Mm. Um, I did a lot of reading. I did a lot of, I was also um, trained to play the violin when I was very uh. young. So I would be inside practicing or working on schoolwork or talking with my, my parents or that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, I didn't really interact with a lot of the children in my neighborhood, but I did have a lot of school friends. Mm -hmm. And that's that's uniquely strange because Detroit is it's considered a big city, right? Yes, when you it think is. so, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And with the Motown, I went to side, private school. You went, I went to, to private school. I went to school in the suburbs, mm -hmm. so you know that put me in a different category as far as they were concerned. So. I got you. I it got is you. What it is. It is. But like is. like Tasha mentioned, those experiences of being around so many culturally diverse. Um, people have really helped me in my um, my later years. So mm -hmm. I appreciate my college, my um, private school education, yeah. my all girls Catholic school, high oh, school is, education. Is that right? I didn't appreciate it then, <laughs> but I appreciate it now. <laughs> you know, Tasha, I um, uh, divinity. I too am a former violinist. I played the violin when I was a young girl too. So I played up until junior high school. And then when I went to high school, they didn't have an orchestra, so I had to give it up. But I did have an opportunity to play at Carnegie Hall. And that was like, oh, ah. yeah, with an orchestra. It was It was like no greater feeling in the world to do that. I'm telling you. So very emotional day that day because you felt the spirit of other musicians that had been in that space. So it was a it was a phenomenal thing. So I want to ask you, Divinity, when what type of music did you listen to? Even though you went to all girl Catholic school, I yes, and we appreciate the diversity. What kind of music were you listening to then? Diverse. Everything. Uh, so, you know, I wasn't really um I, I just listened to everything. My brother was in the house at the time. And uh, he listened to all kinds of things from George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelics mm -hmm. to Chicago and Steely Dan and Led Zeppelin and mm -hmm. all of that. And so that's, to be real honest, that's still where I live. I'm mm -hmm. a classic rock girl through and through. Yeah. Um, you get in my car now and I got on the 70s station. Yeah. I'm jamming to the 70s yeah. music and yeah. I'm singing things that people have never heard before. And they're like, where did she come from? But that's what I grew <laughs> up on. Um, and also a lot of um, classical music, really, yeah, you know, playing nice. the violin. Mm -hmm. There were certain pieces that I just loved and I would listen to. So mm -hmm. I grew up listening to everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When did and you appreciating it all? So were you singing along with the music at that time? Is that Absolutely. when this? Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I remember getting dressed for school in the morning with my mom and the station we would listen to played a lot of Beatles. And so mm. I would be singing right along with the Beatles. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember it clearly. Yeah. You, can you give me a little Michelle? My That's exactly dad. what I was thinking. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, my mom said she named yeah. me after that song, so uh -huh. that's what it is. <laughs> I love that. Thanks, love that Divinity, song. for that little hum. Tasha, tell me, what type of music were you listening to out there? In the, out so, there in the West? Hmm? In the West. So it was a combination of mostly gospel music. Um, so I grew up, um, first it was, um, it was, well, we grew up Christian, but there's different sub things. I'm trying, Methodist, that's the one. Okay. We grew up Methodist and then switched to like AME and then Baptist and then non-denominational. Okay. So, uh, but, but the majority of it was, was gospel music. And then also, um, like a lot of Motown mm -hmm. and um, and when we did listen to the radio station, it was extremely diverse. So then that's when I got to hear a lot of soft rock music. And I feel you on like, I love soft rock music. Mm -hmm. like, I love listening to level 42. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Star Child. 
Star yes. Child and Something About You in the 80s. Yeah, for Love 4 2. Yeah, they're awesome. Yes, bands. absolutely. So, but like uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Saturday mornings, they were blasting as loud as possible while we were cleaning the house. Um, you know, and then Sundays, it was Mahalia Jackson and Yolanda Adams. Mm. Um, so it's a, a nice mix of stuff. My mom had a wonderful record collection. Awesome. So, when did, were you always singing with the songs, Tasha, for you? You were singing always. that time? Mm -hmm. Always. And it started with my mom when I was really, really young because um, my, my mom sings. So I picked it up from her first. And then the more we listened to the radio, um, I started singing along to Yolanda Adams and Mahalia Jackson. So I was mm -hmm. like two, three or three, four years old, walking around talking about soon will be done <laughs> and try to have a vibrato at three years old. It's kind of funny. <laughs> can you do can you do that again? <laughs> <laughs> that was so that was oh fantastic. my gosh that was so good I felt that I thought James Cleveland was coming to you for a minute <laughs> you so silly Tasha oh my God. did you did you always know you wanted to sing um I did I've always been interested in it and um I remember hearing at um my Sunday school um, my teachers would say, you know, they'd be like, she, she's going to be a singer. Mm. I for some reason, I don't remember a whole bunch of stuff, but I remember that. Um, and then the older I got, the more involved I wanted to be. Mm. Um, it wasn't until I saw Lauren Hill in Sister Act 2 mm -hmm. that I was like, I actually want to do this as a career. Because that was the first time I saw somebody who looked like me um, and they were singing and they were on the other side of the television. So mm -hmm. I was like, how do I get inside this TV box? <laughs> um, and so that was my thing starting in high school. Um, I had my own insecurities that I was dealing with. And mm -hmm. so for a long time, I didn't want anybody to know I sang because it seemed like that would be the only reason why they wanted to hang around me. Uh. Um, but once I got older and came into my own and, you know, got a lot more confidence and then I just turned into, I want to sing, and these are the reasons why, so I'm going for it. Mm, beautiful story. Beautiful story. D Divinity, did you know you always wanted to sing? No. <laughs> I'll take that answer. Um, I'll take I, it. You know, I, I, I've always loved to sing, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, initially my focus was, like I said, on the violin. I, I learned to, to play when I was very little. Um, I learned through what was called the Suzuki method. I was like three or four maybe, and they taught my mom, and my mom in turn taught me. That was how the, the program worked. So I, when I say I grew up playing the violin, I did. And I, you know, I wasn't wild about it, but that was what my parents wanted me to do, and that was what I did. So I played through high school, right. and then when I felt like I was old enough to make a decision, I put that thing down. <laughs> I always wanted to take voice lessons, but I never really thought that I would be a singer. So mm. um, songwriting, yeah, because poetry has always been a go-to for me, but not necessarily a singer. Mm. So why did you pursue it then if you didn't think that was something you, you wanted? I think it pursued me. You think, um, mm. I think it pursued me. Yeah. Uh, um, I always sang, like, you know, I was never really shy about singing, uh -huh. but I remember being, um, I was like the the class jukebox on the bus. So like I said, I went to private school, mm. so I would take a bus to school and it would take us a while to get out there. And so people would be like, you know this song, sing this song. And I would sing it, you know, do mm. all the beats and all of the wow. stuff. Wow. Um, so yeah, I, I've always done that kind of thing. Um, and I even helped to establish a gospel choir at my school. Nice. But in terms of being a um, professional vocalist, no, I, I did not see that one coming. Did you? Do you remember your first professional uh, experience, Divinity? You remember the first time you sang professionally? Um, I remember my first studio experience okay. was with Terrence Parker when I was like in high school. Um, and um, my first professional gigs, I want to say we're at a club in Canada. Mm. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but um, I was just releasing music on Women on Wax and Minx was playing at this um, club regularly. And she asked me to um, come and perform. Uh -huh. And that was my first performance in front of a, a crowd. Um, my first like big performance was um, 
718 sessions for Danny Crivet. Mm. Yeah. The, the heavies, you just came out the box. What? Right, with the heavies, right? <laughs> Shouts out to DJ Minx, right? Shouts out to her. You just, just boom, just came out with the heavies? Is that well, what we're that's doing? that's how I felt. That's how I felt. Find a Way had just come out and people were just raving about it. Danny loved it. And it was for his birthday. And we were, I had just met him in Miami. And um, we were just promoting Find A Way. And he was like, I want you to come perform. And I was like, oh my God. Thank you, Danny. Now what do I do? Thank you, Danny. Like, you go to New York and you perform. That's, That's right. You Thank you, Danny. But, uh, we I appreciate did. that. We appreciate that show. And you haven't, you haven't looked back since. I haven't looked back since. What it's a, been a blessing. What a thing. What a thing. Tasha, tell me, why, why singing for you, right? You've been singing, you have some insecurities, but you, you know, you didn't want people to know that you were re really actually sing, could sing. And then mm -hmm. you got over that. So why did you pursue it if you felt a little bit mm, not comfortable in the skin you were in at the time? Um, for, actually, for the same reason why I was nervous about it. Mm -hmm. um, I used it as a way to help me overcome my insecurities. Mm -hmm. And it was more of a part of my personal journey. And then as I, I was working, you know, like a regular nine to five as I was trying to write, and, mm -hmm. you know, get music out and stuff. And I was meeting people who pick careers because they had responsibilities. Um, some of them pick careers because they were afraid, mm -hmm. but they really wanted, they were passionate about something else. So at lunchtime or on our breaks, they would talk about how this thing they were so passionate about, they would just light up talking about it, mm. but felt like they couldn't pursue it. Right. And as I continued to sing, I wanted my music to stand for that. I wanted it to be something that could help someone else to find the courage to just go for whatever is in your heart. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have to let go of the responsibilities you have, but you make room for what's pa what you're passionate about because you have it in you for a reason. Mm -hmm. We don't all know what that reason is, but it's in you. Just like how Davini was saying, like music sought her out, singing mm -hmm. sought her out. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason for it all and we don't know what it is, but we owe it to ourselves and the people that this music is going to serve to figure it out. I got it.